Hi, seventh grade. I hope you had a restful weekend. All right, well, let's review um, some things that we've already learned. Do you remember how to find the mean absolute deviation? Well, we have a data set and we write it in a chart like this. Then we find the mean of the data set by adding these items and dividing by the total number of items in the data set. And that becomes this, 53. And then once we find that, we're going to find the distance of the data from the mean. Okay, so I like to just take the bigger number and subtract the lowest number. Okay. Um, so you get this. And then to find the mean absolute deviation, you need to find the sum of the distances. Then you divide the sum by the number of data values, and that'll equal 9.6 in this example. And then what does the mean absolute deviation tell you about the data? Well, on average, the data values are 9.6 units away from the mean. And we've also learned about these key terms population versus sample. Now, it may be impractical to do to study or ask survey questions with the population or analyze a large population. And so you might want to take a sample of that population. And we have random sample versus bias sample. Bias sample is something you don't want because they're not representative of the actual population. A random sample um, basically means that every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. And we learned about three types of random sampling, like simple random, stratified, and systematic. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make inferences about a population. But what does inference mean? Well, to infer means to conclude something from evidence or fact. It may not tell you straight out you need to kind of look at the clues, the hints, the evidence um, to make your own conclusions. And so why is inference needed in statistics? Well, let's look at this example. You guys know what those are? Well, um, those are eaglets. Um, it might be difficult to collect data about the number of eggs laid and eaglets hatched in every eagle's nest in a state. Instead, you could use a random sample to make inferences about the population. And this is what we were doing last week when we were looking at random, stratified, and systematic. We're making inferences about the population. Now, making those inferences mean it's an approximation, not an exact about the population. Um, and let's look here. Well, excuse me. Well, yeah. Let's look at this example. Um, suppose that a population consists of 10 test scores, as you see there, 67, 80, 54, 76, 90, 48, 65, 60, 73, and 80. Woo! And this population is small, so we can calculate the mean easily. And the mean is 69.3. So I wrote that back up here on the screen. The population mean is 69.3. And... Let's try to take um, some different samples. So four samples. Our sample size is four. So the first set is 80, 40, 73, and 80 from the actual population. The second set differs slightly. And then the third set differs slightly as well. But there are four um, different um, sets of samples from um, the actual population. Okay, And let's find the sample mean. So for the first set is 70.25, for the second set is 67.75, for the third set is 75. Notice the sample means don't, um, are not equal to one another. In fact, are they equal to the population mean? No, they're not. That's why sample means are an approximation to the population mean. And different samples of the same sample size produce different approximations of the population mean. The mean of the sample mean is also an estimate of the population mean. One more example. 
Um, a population consists of test scores of 60 students, a random sample, um, 80 times 6, 9, 10, 14, 17, 10, 9, 11, of 10 scores has been collected from the population. So we're going to calculate the sample mean and use it to approximate the population mean. So the sample mean is you're going to add all those data values divided by 10 and you get 11.4. So the population mean is 11.4. And then it says calculate the mean absolute deviation. So we write the data items here, we write the mean here, we write the distance from the data from the mean. So just subtract the bigger number minus the lower number and you get these values here. And then to find that, the mean absolute deviation, you have to take the sum of the distances in the numerator and then divide by the total number of items. Put that in the denominator 10 and you get 2.96. And I just moved that over here, so here's our mad, 2.16. Now part C says to draw a dot plot of the scores in the mean. So let's see, our lowest score is a 6, and then our highest score is an 18. It looks like it's 18, okay? And you're just drawing a dot plot, and you're also showing where the mean is here. And then the Using math to mean ratio in the dot plot, describe informally how varied the scores are. So first, let's find the mean to um, math to mean ratio. So you're going to take mad, which is 2.96, and then divide it by the mean, which is 11.4, and you get 0 0.26, which is 26%. Okay, And look at the mean. And look at the data values. Uh, we have some outliers that are quite far, like this 6 and an 18 and 17. They're quite far from the mean, aren't they? So they will affect um, the variability here. Okay, And 26% shows that oh, it's somewhat varied. Okay? Now, a good rule of thumb is this. And I'm going to just increase my, maybe I'll put it here so I can increase my video size. And you can still see that. Okay. So good rule of thumb is this, okay? If you get 40% um, variability from the mean or higher, then that's very significant, okay? If you get 10% variability from the mean or lower, well, that's insignificant, okay? And 26% seems to lie between these two. It shows some variation, okay? Um, all right, so now I would like for you guys to do um, this on your own. And I'm just going to increase my video just a tad because I'm going to the work on my other oops okay so um please try to complete number one on your own and remember that um if it shows 40 percent variability from the mean that's significant and if it shows 10 percent variability from the mean that's insignificant okay all right um so i'll be waiting while you work on that Okay, how was it? Okay, so part A, I'm not going to read it because I'm assuming that you read it. Um, part A says um, you got to calculate the sample mean. So we're going to add all the data values here, divide it by 10, and you get 11.2 years old as your sample mean. Okay. Um, and then part B says calculate the mat of the sample. And so you I will recommend drawing this chart, okay? And so I put all the data values here, the mean here, and the distance um, here, okay? And then to find the mid, you want to do the sum of the distances divided by 10, which is 48 divided by 10, and that's equal to 4.8 years old as the mean absolute deviation, okay? So the data values on average um, deviate 4.8 years old from the mean. Okay. 
And then D, oh, I'm sorry, C is we're going to calculate the math to mean ratio here, which is 4.8 divided by 11.2. And you get basically approximately 43% and then um, round it. Okay, um, and hmm, what does this mean? Okay, well, remember, okay, 43%. That's actually significant, right? Because it's higher than 40. Okay. Um, and so we're going to look at this and we're going to also look at the our dot plot here. Okay, so this is our dot plot. Okay, and you see that, ooh, there's a lot of data values that are quite far from the mean. Like there's no data value that's like right next to it, right? Okay, and so yeah, this shows that, ooh, the data values. Um, are significantly um, variable, or they, you know, they are varied from the mean. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah. And so that's also the answer to E. Right. All right. We're done. Woohoo! Um, just keep practicing. In your homework and if you have any questions that come up please we'll talk about it on Thursday okay during our live class. I have enjoy the rest of your day and if you need to rest please take a good rest for today okay bye